last time on The Bill. All right, Rob, now that we got the crank installed, uh, what are we doing next? Now the first thing we'll do is start putting our rings on our pistons. And the first ring we put on is our oil rings. Okay. This is an oil expander. The tab's going down or up. They recommend that tab go down for sealing. We take it and put it in the big gap on the big ring land on the piston. I'm going to put these rings on before I assemble them in the motor. We're going to put the gaps at staggered Okay. Difference yeah, is that we don't want them lined up because that promotes blow by. Okay. These here we just spiral them on. Put the top one on first that holds it. All right. Taking the second ring. Put it in the gap. This is my second ring. And that's where it's got a top. It's got a dot on it. The dot goes up. These are ring expander pliers. That's okay. what these are designed for. I open it up just enough, to slide it down. I'm in my top groove, and I'm gonna go down I'm on the second groove. Here's the second ring. It's just a cast iron ring. This okay. is a molly coated ring. Okay. It's a harder ring. So we'll take a rod cap off here. Give us an insert bearing. We're going to put our insert in here. These are what they call crank savers. So when we go to drive our piston down the hole, our rod bearings or our rod bolts don't slam into our crankshaft and mar it up and ruin the whole job. Okay. <laughs> okay I'm going to go ahead and oil the piston up. We're going to leave them in. We're not going to put any lube on them yet because we're going to mic. We're going to uh, plastic gauge them. This is our ring compressor. Let's we'll start it in there. First one you usually get it set and then you're good for the rest of the engine. The way I do it, I put in number one and then number two. When the rods come down on the crankshaft, they're going to be next to each other and there's a clearance there. Some fellows will do one line and flip it and do the other line. Just whatever you're comfortable with. Put our caps on. We're going to put a little piece of plastic gauge on each journal. We're going to check our oil clearances here as well. Okay, now we're going to torque our rods. These I do in two steps, since it's just 55 foot pounds, we're going to go 25, 55. and then 55. And then we're going to back them back off, and read our plastic gauge. And really close to that one and a half still. Not quite the one. See? Still within tolerance? I think we're still there. I'm not quite ready to degree yet, but I got my crank bolt all set up on <laughs> my degree wheel here, so we're just so going to put it on so we can turn it over. Feels nice and free. And next we're going to install the camshaft. Alright. We'll lube on our camshaft, get it lubed up good. We know it fits because we we tested it Check that when we uh, put our cam bearings in. Next, we'll put our timing chain and gear set on. Put the number one at top dead center. I'm going to take my cam gear and put on. And initially, we're just going to line up the dots, is what they call it, because there's a dot on each gear. There's a dot right there on our cam gear. Okay. So actually, when it's running, it'll be up here, is when you're at number one. Okay. Top dead center, actually, that is number one. Okay. This particular gear set, it has a needle bearing, a roller bearing. It's a thrust bearing is what it is. Thrust in and out. Right. So whenever it this. makes contact, it, instead right. of just rubbing. Right. Instead of metal to metal, you got a bearing back here spinning. We'll take our chain. 
and how tight we're going to be with our sprocket here. Okay, this one here, right now we're just going to check number one at zero. So here's our zero notch. That's what's going to go onto our keyways. Okay. And here's what we're going to be reading. We're going to put our zero straight up and down there. Okay. Nice and tight. 